Friends, I welcome you on Baiju's Exam Prep, India's most comprehensive preparation paid form for all the engineers. All the candidates who are joining me live in this session, just quickly confirm your presence in the comment section and tell me whether my audio, visual quality, everything is clear so that we can start with the session. A very warm welcome to all of you. Welcome to the session. Welcome to, I can say, one of the most important session for GATE 2023 when within one session, we are going to talk about verbal ability, those five questions, which is a nightmare for everyone, which is a nightmare for everyone, that is verbal ability part. So there are five questions generally based on verbal ability. And I always say that these five questions are like icing on the cake. Icing on the cake means what? I will tell you. But before we actually start the session, I want to know what is the structure in this class? All of you just tell me whether I should go for English language only or I should go for Hindi and English both. So what is your choice? Thank you, Akash. Good evening. A very warm welcome to all of you. Welcome to the session. Everybody just tell me English only or English Hindi mix. And I will go with the democracy. More is the numbers. I am going to follow that. I am going to follow the majority. Okay. So what I will do is because uh, I think there is equal voting for English and English and Hindi mix. So sometimes I will be using Hindi also, but I ensure you that whatever I speak in Hindi, I will translate it in English also, so that both the category of students, they are understanding 100% of what I'm going to tell today. Now, when I say that verbal ability is icing on the cake, what does it mean? Let us try to understand. Suppose there are three category of student. A students who are getting 60 plus marks, a students who are getting 50 plus marks, a students who are getting 40 plus marks. Now, beyond 40, I think I should not talk because that is not going to be justice with gate examination. So minimum I am taking as 40, 40 plus marks. Now if you can I add these five questions, if you can add these five questions somewhere around you can say 6 to 8 marks or you can say whatever marks are being allotted, if you can add up these five questions, okay. So if your rank might be coming under 500, now your rank will be cutting coming under AIR under 100 or maybe 200. 50 plus marks if your AIR is coming somewhere under maybe I can say 4000 or 5000 you understand. Then with 5 questions added it is going to be less than 2000. And for 40 plus questions you can understand what, what should be the case. So it is icing on the cake. Because all the candidates who fall into this category, all the candidates who fall into this category of 60 plus marks, they are not going to be quite different in terms of their technical aptitude or technical expertise. But these five questions can make a big difference. Even if you see the toppers only, toppers are also having this phobia in their mind that these five questions are going to trouble them throughout the year, how to prepare this verbal ability part. So all of you just tell me how many of you actually have a phobia, actually have a phobia. Phobia means fear, fear of something. So how many of you have this phobia related to verbal ability as far as gate examination is concerned? I will tell you everything also, slabbers also, don't worry. How many people have a phobia related to verbal ability part? Now, please understand what is a phobia. I will tell you one example and you will understand apart from that, everything what you think is a phobia is not a phobia, it's just a myth just a misinterpretation in your mind and nothing else. Most of you when you are reading in the night, okay, and take it very practically and objectively, when you are reading in the night and suppose you are feeling thirsty, 
So what you do? You go and open the refrigerator, take the water bottle and drink water. When you are opening the fridge, at that time you are having this phobia in your mind that somebody is sitting inside the fridge, inside the refrigerator. That is the only phobia which is real. Everybody has this kind of phobia. Apart from this, verbal ability, difficulty level in gate examination, which rank I am going to get, whether I will be successful or not, all this phobia is useless. It is not real. It is your, it is your brain child. It is not real. So, how to approach verbal ability? Because verbal ability deals with English as a language. English as a language. So, how you can expect me to make you perfect in English language in just one session? Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. Because I am not promising you to give you a mastery in the language, but I will give you enough, enough stuff to handle the questions in the gate examination. Because over the years, if you see the pattern, the pattern of questions, you can find a way out. And if you have that direction, if you have that approach, you can get these five out of five questions complete in your bucket in the gate examination. Anyways, so with your permission, let me start the session. Some of you may be joining me for the first time. So there is a brief introduction about myself. My name is Ashutosh. As you can see on the screen, I have 11 plus years of teaching experience, completed MTech from IIT BHU in 2010. I have written a couple of books on engineering ethics and power system and these are my areas of expertise. Before I start the session, there is one important information about the master MSQ series where we are going to discuss the expected MSQ questions and their approach for electrical, electronics, instrumentation and computer science. It is going to be live from today itself that is 17th of January and you have to subscribe to Baiju's exam prep to enjoy these sessions. Now today only I have conducted uh, an important workshop at 7.30 p.m. today, 17th January, how to become an IAS officer in first attempt. So if you are interested, you can see this, see this workshop available on Baiju's exam prep app. So everybody just hit the like button. I want all of you to hit the like button, all of you. Just let me check whether you are doing it or not. Everybody just quickly hit the like button. Everybody just quickly hit the like button, hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of the important session and, and, and subscribe to Baiju's exam prep so that you do not miss any of the important session. Okay. So let us start. Everybody now, let's start. Be serious now. Everybody let's start. But before I start, let me give you some idea. Okay, let me give you some idea. How we are going to approach this particular part for your gate examination? If you ask me, if I simply teach you the rules in terms of the grammar, in terms of the syntax and how questions can be asked, then definitely you will not be benefited. Because right now you will feel that you understand the logic, you can remember it, but tomorrow morning you will forget it. Okay? And it is actually not required to remember the rules. What is required to have a mental mapping of the examples I am going to give you? Examples from your day to day life. So whenever you find that same situation, you can relate that question to the real life problem or real life situation in your life and you can answer the right option. Is it clear everybody? So my approach will be to do the verbal ability part with the help of examples, even though I will tell you the rules, but I am going to focus on examples. So are you going to follow me in that? Are you happy with that? Everybody just tell me yes or no. Are you, are you able to follow this? That rules, remembering rules are not going to help you in the last hour. It is better you go with the examples, just have a frame in your mind that if this type of question is being asked, then you have to approach it like this. This should be your strategy. Let me start with, let me start with 
the very basic part what is a sentence we will be understanding we will be understanding sentence parts of speech in this parts of speech we will discuss noun pronoun verb adverb adjective and with the help of all these we will discuss some of the rules and with the help of those rules we will see some examples and those examples are going to be the guiding force for you to solve the questions in the verbal ability part. So, let me introduce to you what is a sentence. If you talk about English language, sentence is a group of words which gives you a complete meaning. What is the, what is the idea behind this complete meaning? Whatever question you ask, you get an answer from that statement. So, a statement is a group of words which has a complete meaning. For example, I am saying, the bird is flying high in the sky. Now I am asking a question. Who is flying? Can you give me an answer? Yes. Sir, bird is flying. Which bird is flying? The bird. What is the? I will tell you. The is article. Articles are of two types definite article and indefinite articles definite articles and indefinite articles definite articles are definite articles are or a, a definite article is the Indefinite article is A or N. Now, these articles when you place before a word, they give you some information for that particular word. For example, if you simply say bird is flying high in the sky, this is also correct. This is also correct. Yes or no? Bird is flying high in the sky, this is also correct. But when you say the bird, then you are saying the bird, this bird, you are definite about the word. You are definite, you know which bird it is. You are saying the bird is flying high in the sky. Are you getting that? Now I am asking you next question. What the bird is doing? So bird is flying. How the bird is flying? The bird is flying high in the sky. And where the bird is flying? The word is flying high in the sky. So, if you want to know whether a given group of word is a sentence or not, you ask all the possible questions. And if you get an answer, if you get an answer, it means it is a complete sentence. Is it clear? Everybody just tell me yes or no in the comment section. Now, what is the? Let me write it on another page. Let me write it on another page. So, let me add one page here. So, what you are saying, the statement is the bird is flying high in the sky. Now, understand one by one. What is the? It is the article. What the article does? Articles give some information related to the word before which it is used. Nishu Kumar, if you are a poet, then better you write the poetry. Okay? Don't do these kind of things in the session. You are a grown up man. What you are doing? 
you are polluting the whole atmosphere. If you want poetry, you can come to another session. This is not the session which belongs to poetry. If you are serious for your exam, then only sit in this class. This is not something uh, stand up comedy running that you can enjoy. It is far more important because it is related to your life, your career. Next 40, 50 years of your life being decided here. Be very serious, otherwise, please don't disturb others. So, these going to be the article. Article is a word which gives you some information related to a particular word. Now, here word, word is a noun. Word is a noun. The subject, subject means who is doing the action. Who is the main hero of the statement that is going to be noun. This is noun. What is is and what is flying? This is main verb and this is auxiliary verb. What the main verb is doing? Main verb gives you the actual action, actual action in the sentence and what this auxiliary verb is doing? It gives you the time stamp. Time stamp means whether it is present, past or future. Suppose we are writing, in place of is, we are writing was. The bird was flying high in the sky. It means it belonged to past tense. Are you getting that? What is high? It is adverb. So, a word which modifies increase or decrease the intensity of a verb intensity of a verb adjective or adverb itself that is called adverb so if you write the bird is flying in the sky this is also correct if you are saying the bird is flying in the sky this is also correct but if you add high it means you are increasing the intensity you are saying bird is not just flying the bird is flying high in the sky. So, these words we are qualifying as, calling as adverbs. Now, this what we are calling as preposition. Preposition. So, it is something related to position. So, basically preposition is a word which gives you the relation of the subject with the verb. What is the relation of this bird with the action flying? Bird is flying. Where bird is flying? Bird is flying in the sky. Is it clear everybody? Are you able to follow this? It is common for all the branches. Okay. It is common for all the branches. Verbal is same for everyone. Na? Okay. So now we will talk about the different parts of a speech. First, we will talk about noun. So, how we are defining a noun? So, noun basically give you identification. You might have read a different definition for noun, but I am going to give you. Shiv Kumar, please wait. I will tell you what is adjective. Okay. So, noun is, is a word which gives you identification. For example, my name is Ashutosh. Your name is XYZ. Your name is Munnu Prasad. Lallu Lal. So, how you are going to differentiate between Ashutosh and Munnu Lal? Or Lallu Lal? Because Munnu Lal is Munnu Lal. And Ashutosh is Ashutosh. So, it gives you identification. A person, place or thing, how it is being identified, he or she is identified. This is called as noun. <coughs> thank you, thank you everybody. Now, stop appreciating and understand what I am telling. Second is pronoun. Second part of speech is pronoun. What is a pronoun? Pronoun is a word which is used in place of noun or pronoun. So, all the time, we are not talking in the first person. 
or simply by taking the name or the noun. Sometimes we are talking in second person or third person also. So in different types of structures of a sentence, we require some words in the place of noun. Those words we are calling as pronoun. What is adjective? A word which precedes noun or pronoun. This is very important. Somebody was asking, the bird was flying high in the sky. High should be adjective, not adverb. Adjective is something which precedes the noun or pronoun. Adjective increases or decreases or modifies the intensity of a noun or pronoun. Whereas adverb is going to increase or decrease or modify the intensity of a verb, adjective or adverb. Are you getting that? Because suppose I can also write here very. The bird is flying very high in the sky. Now very is going to increase the intensity of this word high which is actually an adverb. So adverb is a word which increase or decrease or modifies the intensity of a verb. Listen, listen, verb, adjective or adverb itself. Don't get confused. Adjective is going to be, adjective is going to be a word which precedes I will give you, I will, we will discuss adjective now, we will discuss number of rules, don't worry about it. Vamshi, Vamshi, please don't use other, uh, the words we are using, okay, don't use other words. The way I am taking you throughout this session, if you follow that, then only you will be benefited. When you are coming to this session, you should be a blank, st blank uh, slate. If already something is written, it is not going to help you. I hope you understand. Because I am telling you my way. I am telling you how to read verbal ability in one session, one day, like an engineer. Okay. Now let us talk about verb. Now, verb is a word that expresses the subject of a sentence. When I use expression, why I am not using action? Because there may be actual action and there may be just an expression of the action. For example, I give you a statement. I am thinking to go to America. I am thinking. I am not actually going to America. I am just thinking. Now, thinking is an action here. So, thinking is not an action. Thinking is an expression. So, verb is a word which gives you an expression of the subject of a sentence. For example, adjective, I can give you the answer. Our team played a good game. Now, here good is going to be an adjective. Because good is coming before game. Game is a noun here. And you can also say our team played a game. I am talking about adjective now. This is also correct. Our team played a game, but when you are saying our team played a good game, so you want to increase or decrease or modify the intensity of a noun or pronoun. Are you getting that? Verb, a word that expresses the subject of a sentence. He is teaching verbal ability. So teaching is giving you the expression what he is doing. So it is verb. What is adverb? Adverb is a word which modifies an adjective verb or adverb itself. Is it clear? The horse runs very fast. You can also say the horse runs fast. How the horse is running? Fast. So this is going to be adverb. It is not adjective because adjective is going to qualify a noun or pronoun. Whereas adverb is going to qualify a verb, adverb or an adjective. So it is fast. It means it is an adverb. You can say the horse runs fast. But if you are saying the horse runs very fast. So you are increasing the intensity of what the horse is doing. Horse is running how fast. So everybody's favorite and one of the legendary faculty and my favorite. Rakesh Taleja sir is in the session and it's a privilege for me. So everybody just give a warm welcome to Rakesh sir. Thank you so much sir for coming to coming to the session. 
it's a great privilege for me to have you in the session so everybody just send some heart symbol and love to rakesh sir on my behalf also the next one is i am deeply grateful to you so if you simply say i am grateful to you this is also correct but you want to increase the intensity so you are saying i am deeply so what is deeply deeply is adverb is it clear this is how you should approach preposition preposition it gives you the position it gives you the relation it tells the relation between the noun or pronoun with something he wrote the document with a pen now what is the relation between he and pen he is writing a document how with a pen so with becomes a preposition with becomes a preposition conjunction the word junction itself tells you that the combination or connection of two or more words so connector it acts as a connection which connects words or phrases or sentence what is a phrase how you are defining phrase phrase is also a group of words but it is incomplete incomplete meaning okay it is going to give you incomplete meaning for example come here i'm just giving you one phrase come here now where to come and whom you are saying come here no information is there thank you thank you so much sir for motivating with motivating students and me also are you getting that so conjunction is going to be acting as a connector a connection between different words phrases or sentences for example delhi and mumbai are metropolitan cities first you tell me what is metropolitan because understanding the meaning of different words is also very very important clause is also a group of words with incomplete uh, meaning incomplete sense okay don't go in that direction forget about class you are not giving an examination on english language understand the meaning of metropolitan what is metropolitan can anybody tell me because if you don't know these critical words when they are coming in the examination na you are feeling little lack of confidence what is metropolitan how you are defining metropolitan and don't do the google if you do google i will catch you yes see metropolitan city is a city which has a large population and the most striking feature how you define metropolitan is there is no unique culture the best example is delhi if you go to lucknow you will find a specific culture if you go to some city in punjab you will find a specific culture if you go to some city in uh, maybe suppose hyderabad you will find a specific culture but when you come to delhi mumbai are you getting that so no unique culture is there there is a mixture of mixture of combination of different cultures that is how we are defining metropolitan city he is not only intelligent but also industrious what is the meaning of industrious industrious means very hard working and when you are using this word industrious you can simply say hard working why you are using why you are using this word industrious why you are using industrious industrious word you are going to use when it is so much hard work that you have to mention it are you getting that suppose you are not using lift and you are going two three floors so this is not being industrious suppose you climb up 15 floors without using escalator or lift and you are going through stairs then it is going to be industrious so like and or not only but also these words are going to connect to different words phrases or sentences that are called as connection conjunction the last one we have is interjection now you remember it like injection when somebody is getting injection what you are doing you are making a very beautiful sound ouch this kind of some exclamatory remark you are giving the same thing 
whenever you have an expression of a strong or sudden feeling, you remember it, how you are going to remember interjection, you remember it from injection, ouch, sudden feeling, a strong feeling, then you are going to use interjection. Interjection words are like this, alas, he is dead. But alas, you cannot use uh, in a very simplistic manner. It's not that your pen is, uh, you're not finding your pen. Then you will say, alas, I lost my pen. Alas is a very strong word. Somebody is dead, that he, then he is using alas. Also hurra. Hurra is also a very strong word. It is not that some fine morning you are getting chole bhature or dosa in the morning breakfast. Then you are shouting hurra. I got chole bhature or dosa in the breakfast. And don't, do, don't say this in front of your father. In front of your father some fine morning if you are saying hurra. So your father is going to give you lot of written gifts. Okay, so hurrah is also something related to a very happy situation when you are very happy, extremely happy. Okay, so these were the different parts of his speech. I think you must be getting some idea because if I tell you how to frame these examples in your mind, that is only possible when you have the basic understanding of things. Anyways, so let us start with noun. Now there are some classification of nouns. For example, common noun. Common noun means when the same class or category is being represented. For example, she is a good girl. Now girl is defining a category in which everybody is belonging to a certain gender, feminine gender. So it represents a class which is the same class. Sita is also a girl, Gita is also a girl, Meera is also a girl. I am just giving you random examples. Proper noun. Why it is named as proper? Proper noun is a noun which you and me actually understand what noun is. The name of a person, place or thing. So that is proper noun. For example, Kali Das was a great poet. Collective noun. Collective noun represents a group. Now, what is the difference between collective noun and common noun? Co common noun represents a group or category or class, but you cannot count them. If I am saying girl, so can you tell me how many girls? You cannot count it. But when I say collective noun, it represents a group and you can count it. A herd of cattle. A herd of cattle. You are using herd. For cattle. I hope you know what is a cattle. Okay. What is a cattle? So basically the pet animals which give you some output like milk or something, some other services, they are categorized as cattle. For example, cow. Okay. So you have different words, for example, flock of birds, flock of birds, a school of fishes, the group of the fish we are calling as a school, the group of birds we are calling as flock, okay, are you getting that? Then we have abstract noun. Abstract means something which cannot be personified or objectified. For example, kindness. Now, if you ask me, sir, show me what is your, where is your kindness. So, I cannot show you where is my kindness. Because it cannot be personified. Kindness is a virtue. Is it personality trait? I cannot show you. Honesty. I cannot show you my honesty. You cannot show me your honesty. Because it is something abstract. It does not have a physical limitation. Then material noun. Material noun which is related to a metal or material. For example, the house is built of brick. Never use bricks. Okay. If you are using bricks. Okay, this is wrong. You should always say the house is built of brick. Now you have to make a frame in your mind. Whenever you talk about house is being built of brick. It should be brick, not bricks. This is how you should frame. Okay. Let us see some of the important rules for the usage of nouns. Rule number one. 
proper noun becomes common noun when it is used in the plural form or when an article is placed before it when an article is placed before it now nobody is going to remember this rule but example you are going to remember there are two hitlers in this house now when you are when you are putting two and writing hitlers in place of hitler making it making it a plural form then it becomes a common noun and don't say this in your home there are two hitlers in the house otherwise your father and mother both are going to give you written gift okay so if you want written gift then when you say this there are two hitlers in the house are you getting that kalidas is the shakespeare of india <coughs> but actually this is wrong because i think kalidas has a much much larger uh, you can say position or authority more than Shakespeare, but because of British rule, we have these kind of examples. So when you say Kalidas is the Shakespeare of India, now putting the before Shakespeare makes it a common noun. So everybody who is proficient in writing something, storytelling something, then he can be compared with Shakespeare. Rule number two, collective noun takes singular verb. Now how to remember this rule? When something is collected, it is made a single unit, then obviously the verb is going to be singular. Yes or no? So, it is going to have a singular verb. For example, the group consists of five members. Even though there are five members, but we are using singular verb. After verb, we are using S or ES. Why? Because it has to be in singular form. Because this group contains one unit. So, if it is one, it should be singular. Now, there is exception. Now, in English language, you will get lot of exceptions. So, whenever I give you this exception, it should be something for your notebook. You should always remember it. The committee. Committee is a plural one. Committee have taken their seats. Now, you are using here have. Even though it is a group, it is treated as a single unity, unit, but still you are using the plural verb. Have, not has. So, please make a frame in this mind. I am giving 7 star to this. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. Is it clear everybody? Rule number 3. Abstract noun as common noun by placing an article before it. Now, beauty is an abstract noun. Now, you are making abstract noun as a common noun by putting a artic an article before it. Now, A is an article here. A is an article here. So, Sushma is a beauty. Are you getting that? Abstract noun as collective noun takes plural verb. When an abstract noun is going to be used to represent a particular group, a unit, then it is going to have plural verb. For example, youth are. Now, I am not going to ask you to remember the rule. I will simply tell you, never use youth is. Always say youth are. This actually you can frame in your mind, na? that it should, it should not be youth is, it should be youth are. Because youth represents an abstract noun, because youth is an abstract. Even an 80 year old person can believe that he or she is young, because it is an abstract idea. So, youth should be followed by plural verb, that is are, not with is. Yes, you will also get the PDF, but after the session. You want me to give you PDF before the session, so that nobody comes to my session? Everything is available in the market, dear, free of cost. It is never about material, it is never about PDF. Five foot, five foot, eight inches person is standing in front of you and you are asking for the hell PDF. Giving you everything. For your examination, you are interested in PDF. Listen. Material noun representing a mass of the matter plural form is not used. When mass of the matter is represented, plural form is not used. For example, their house is made of bricks and stone. This is wrong. As I told you, this is this is wrong.
Yes, that is what I am telling you, Mantasha. I will tell you the exceptions and the rules. You should say the house is made of brick and stone, not bricks and stone. So, this is correct. This frame, get a frame in your mind. Rule number six, some nouns are used in singular only. For example, advice. Now, you should not say I have given lot of advices to him. That is wrong. You should say I have given him advice. Advice may be one, maybe two, maybe ten. You cannot count it. So, advice means advice. It should not be advices. Grain, hair, information. You should not say informations. If you are writing information, it is wrong everywhere. If you are writing hairs, actually I should not talk about hair. But because I have to teach you, so I have to take this pill. Okay. It should be singular, always singular. For example, the advice of the doctor is that I should not smoke. Now, you cannot say the advices of the doctor are. That is wrong. Are you getting that? The advice of the doctor is that I should not smoke. Or you can say the doctor advised me not to smoke. Now, there is a difference. When you write advice, then it is a noun. But when you write advise, this C and S replaced, then it becomes a verb. You see here, S, the doctor advised, when it is used as a, as a verb, then S is used. When you, it is used as a noun, then C is used. Don't worry, you will not lose mark anymore in English also. Because Baiju's exam prep is here. Then also it is advice. I am telling you advice, grain, hair, information, you should never use in the plural form. Always use in the singular form only. Are you getting this? So when it is C, it is noun. When it is S, it is verb. One interesting case I am telling you, because most of you might not be aware with this. It's okay, it's okay, experiment, listen. Summons itself is a singular word. Summons itself is a singular verb. The plural form of summons is summons says. The plural form of summons is summons says. Listen, 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 listen. For example, some nouns are always used in plurals. For example, scissors, biceps, trousers, earnings. You should never say earning. If you are saying earning, it becomes verb. If you have to treat it as a noun, then you should say earnings. Are you getting that? Is it clear? Rule number seven, apparently, apparently plural, but singular in news. There are some words which looks like if it is a plural form, but actually they are singular. For example, news. I don't know how many of you know the full form of news. It is basically north, east, west, south. So it is the abbreviation of N-E-W-S, news. It is not plural. It is singular. Physics, economics. Rule number eight. There are some words, some nouns which are always in plural. For example, cattle, police, people. So, police you should always use in plural. You should never say police is. You should say police are. Because it is plural. And these type of cases they are going to ask in the examination where general people are confused. Okay, you should never say people is, you should say people are. Get the frame, the way I am telling you. When a plural noun represents the whole, when the plural noun represents the whole, the verb must be in the singular form. For example, 
टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज नो यू शुड नॉट फोकस ऑन हेयर रुपीज एंड थिंकिंग दैट इट इज अ प्लूरल नो यू हैव टू रिमेंबर दैट इट रिप्रेजेंट अ होल लाइक अ ग्रुप टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज इज द अमाउंट अमाउंट इज अ यूनिट सो यू आर यूजिंग इज यू शुड नॉट से टेन थाउजेंड रुपीज आर ए लार्ज अमाउंट दिस इज रॉन्ग दिस इज रॉन्ग वे ऑफ सेंग एंड आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू इलेवन स्टार्स वेरी वेरी हाई पॉसिबिलिटी यू मे गेट इट इन योर एग्जामिनेशन ट्विंकल ट्विंकल लिटिल स्टार You should not say ten thousand rupees are a large amount. You should say is a large amount. Is it clear, everybody? Possessive noun not used for inanimate objects. What is the meaning of possessive? Possessive means to get the ownership. For example, this mobile belongs to me, so I possess this mobile. Yes or no? This remote belongs to some particular brand for example i am telling you are you getting this so possession means to getting the ownership of something basically it is the apostrophe for example you are write, writing like this na apostrophe s this is called as possession possessive case now inanimate means lifeless inanimate means lifeless For example, you should never say table's leg. This is wrong. Get a frame in your mind. If you are writing table's leg, it is wrong. You should always say leg of the table. You cannot use possession because it is inanimate, lifeless. Lifeless things cannot have ownership. Only things which have a life they can have ownership. Inanimate objects representing beauty or grace. they are representing as feminine gender for example moon whenever you are writing a sentence for example you are talking about moon so you, you are you, you are using the feminine gender because it is related to beauty or grace please please rishi listen 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 don't deviate yourself and others Rule number twelve: Inanimate objects representing strength, superiority, violence, etc., they are represented as male. For example, sun, death, war. Okay. Now I remember some interesting thing. In Indian mythology, it is little deviation from here. In Indian mythology, moon is called as Mama, Chanda Mama. So, do you know the reason why it is being called as Chanda Mama? Why not Mosa or Fufa? Okay, so find the reason. This is the homework for you. Why it is called as Chanda Mama? Something for your interview. Rule number thirteen: Possessive case apostrophe with the name of the personified object. Now there is exception. For lifeless things, you cannot give apostrophe. possessive case but here you can give death's icy hand it is okay because here you are doing the personification na even if it is lifeless but you are treating it as animate things personifying something so now you can say death's icy hand when the noun is in the plural form rule number 14 possessive case is used when the noun is in the plural form for example girls hostel so when it is you are writing girls so already it is a plural form so you cannot write like this you have to simply put the apostrophe not the s girls hostel okay when it is in plural you have to use apostrophe like this only birds nest okay now let us talk about pronoun everybody just tell me are you comfortable with the noun rules related to the noun let us talk about the pronoun i told you pronoun is a word which is used in place of a noun or pronoun in place of pronoun also you can use a pronoun for example it how it is used use of it to introduce a sentence 
it's not just the subject of the sentence but to introduce a sentence you are starting a sentence how to put it in the situation you are using it for example it is not certain that president will come the real idea is whether president will come or not you are not certain but to introduce this you are using it is not certain this is this is itself is a revision rishi okay to emphasize to a noun or pronoun this is the second usage to emphasize to a noun or pronoun for example it was you who started the argument you will understand this type of statement after marriage when the other party is going to tell you it was you who started the argument but before marriage also you can understand for gate examination for inanimate or impersonal things or objects for example it rains it rains it is raining so you are using it to have impersonification impersonification or for inanimate objects to show distance it is not far to walk you are talking about a distance you are indicating a distance and you are saying you can walk also why to take a cab so you are saying it is not far to walk i hope you are getting it yes we'll do questions also complete package chota packet bada dhamaka sorry small packet big blast english i have to say it is also used to indicate time for example it is 10 o'clock now somebody is asking you what is the time you can simply say 10 o'clock but you are using it to indicate it is 10 o'clock what is the meaning of this o it represents of the clock it is the short form of this o dash represents of the clock so you simply you you not say it is 10 now you say it is 10 o'clock o'clock means of the clock is it clear everybody two is a different word beta T double O two is a different word. See the rule number two. We will discuss that also, do not worry. While confessing the fault, this is very interesting, it is going to be very interesting. Now, there are some people, they are going for dinner. What is the time? 9.56. So, their parents must be asking, Puttan chalo khana khao. Puttan come eat your food. Okay. In India, we have very funny pet names. So, I know somebody whose house, house name was Puttan. You remember Puttan? I think you will remember Puttan. Okay. Anyways, leave it. So, don't be a Puttan. Focus on your studies. If you become a Puttan, you will get a zero in the gate exam. Okay, this is the beauty of online education. Parallelly, you can eat. Some people are eating like this. So don't eat like this. Eat like this only. Otherwise, you will get sleep. <clears throat> now, this is very interesting. It is going to be very interesting. When confessing the fault, when you have to say something negative, then as a gentleman language English, in terms of English, you should say, when it is a negative idea you are expressing, the sequence of the pronouns will be, first you should blame yourself, it is my fault, it is my fault, then you should blame the person who is standing in front of you, I, you and he, then the person who is outside the situation. When it is a negative idea, when it is a complaint, when it is a problem, when it is a something you have to work, you have to confess as a fault then i you and he first you take the responsibility the blame then the person who is standing in front of you then the person who is outside the situation okay now when it is a positive idea then what is the sequence when it is a positive idea then first you have to respect the person who is standing in front of you you he and me in the last you have to give credit to yourself you he and i 
विल बी अवॉर्डेड इज इट क्लियर पॉजिटिव नेगेटिव आइडिया रूल नंबर फोर टू सिंगुलर नाउन्स ज्वाइंट बाई एंड एंड रिप्रेजेंट द सेम पर्सन और थिंग देन प्रोनाउंस शुड बी सिंगुलर नाउ इट इज नॉट अ रूल इट इज अ लॉजिक सपोज यू आर सेंग द अकाउंट ऑफिसर एंड द ट्रेजर शुड बी केयरफुल should be careful in his work now here the account officer and the treasurer is same person because it is a part of a passage that is you are not able to understand it but you understand that it is the same person so you are using his you are not using plural form rule number 5 two singular nouns joined by and and preceded by each and every i am going to give it 11 stars very frequently asked case very frequently asked case each and every then pronoun should be in the similar form because when you say every student when you say every teacher you are talking to each individual teacher or student are you getting that every student and every teacher took his or her seat Singular form you are writing. So whenever it is preceded by each and every, you have to use singular form of the pronouns. Is it clear? That is what I am telling you. You don't need to remember these rules. You have to remember the case, na? You you forget this. You remember when it is each and every. each and every then always use the singular pronoun his or her when each and every his or her each and every his or her remembered finished you have to make a mental map a frame in your mind rule number 6 singular noun and plural noun are combined by either or neither nor then singular noun comes first in the sentence and pronoun must be in plural now understand with the help of example obviously you are not going to remember it either the manager or his subordinates so first singular noun comes first singular noun comes first so it is the manager you cannot say either his subordinates or the manager that will be wrong this is a structure you have to get a frame singular will come first then plural and then pronoun is going to be plural either the manager or his subordinates failed in their duties their duties why there because you are indicating this hello are you getting the structure either or neither nor first you will be getting the singular for example either or neither nor and then so first you will be using first you will be using here singular then plural and after this the verb you are using that that should also be plural just remember this frame in your mind is it clear everybody something you have to do na if it is so much easy everybody would have done it okay see the next rule personal pronouns for example yours ours hers etc are written without apostrophe now this is such a strong rule it can change your life you can disrespect anyone in your life whenever somebody is writing the application and he is writing yours sincerely like this apostrophe this is wrong the moment you see somebody writing this you start clapping like this oh ho oh, oh, ho oh, oh, ho you don't know english you like that you can do so you can enjoy 
giving disrespect to others that they do not know English language. What is correct is yours sincerely. Never use apostrophe when you are having the personal pronouns like yours, ours, hers. This is wrong. Is it clear? Priyanka, where you are asking? Took or take? Where you are asking? Here, it is took. Past tense they are talking about. Are you getting that? Rule number 8. One is in general about people but never use pronoun as his or her. So, whenever you are using one, always use ones. Never use his or her. For example, you cannot say one should do his duties. This is wrong. It is completely wrong. Are you getting this? It should be one should do one's duties. Rule number 9. Relative pronoun, it must be placed to the noun as near as possible. This is the manager who abused the clerk. So, this is relative to this because the manager has abused the clerk. Relative pronoun in the objective case is generally omitted. This is extremely important. I am going to give 21 stars. Very, very important. Very frequently asked in your examination. 21 stars, relative pronoun, in the objective case is generally omitted. For example, the student you wanted to punish is absent today. This is correct. You should not use whom in the written English. In spoken English, you can say the student whom you wanted to punish is absent today. This is correct in the spoken English. But verbal ability in the gate examination is going to follow the written English. Written English says you should avoid this whom. You should not say the student whom. Why? Because objective case. Are you getting this? Rule number 11, use of which? Now, this is very interesting. I am going to give 11 stars very frequently asked in your examination. I am again making you remember this, understand this. I am not teaching you English language. English language cannot be taught in one session or one day. It takes the whole life to get command over a language. I am simply telling you the important issues which you can use in your gate examination, nothing else. Which is going to be used for infants, objects, small animals? Infants, you can understand. Infant is somebody who is 0 to 12 months. Okay. Then you have toddler. Toddler is going to be 1 to 3 years. 1 to 2 years or 3 years you can say toddler. Then you have kid. So, from 2 to 3 years to 12 years. It is kid. Then adolescent from 13 to 18. Okay, and then you have adult more than 18 years with adult. Something for your common understanding. So, for infants, objects, small animals, you can use which. For example, this is the baby which was lost in the theater. Make a frame in your mind. You should not say like teen age, teen age. Understand that? 13, 14, 15, 16. So, 13 age is very difficult age. Okay, slowly when there is hormonal change, so, people become, children become little fierce, very difficult to manage, very difficult age it is. This is the baby, you should not say who, you should not say who, that is wrong. You should not say this is the baby who was lost in the theater, that is wrong. Make a frame in your mind. This is the baby which was lost in the theater. 
for doing some selection. Which of these watches do you want to purchase? Refer to a sentence or situation. He was said to be drunk, which was not true. So you are referring to another sentence by using which. He was supposed to be, he was said to be drunk, which was not true. Usage of that. That is used for persons, lifeless things, etc. Whether it is singular or plural. For example, this is the girl that failed in the exam. This is the mobile that I bought yesterday. So you can use it for lifeless things also like mobile and you can use it for persons also. Now when you are writing the weather of Hyderabad, this is very very important. 21 stars, very frequently asked in your examination. If you are writing the weather of the Hyderabad is far better than Mumbai, this is wrong because you cannot compare the weather of Hyderabad with Mumbai. You can compare the weather of Hyderabad with weather of Mumbai. So you should say the weather of Hyderabad is far better than that of Mumbai. So now you compare the weather of Hyderabad with weather of Mumbai. Don't compare the weather of Hyderabad with Mumbai. Mumbai is a city, not a weather. Rule number 13. Either and neither. It is always used for two persons, objects or things. For example, neither Mohan nor Sohan is intelligent. Okay. Each other and one another. Where you are going to use each other and where one another. When you say each other, it is for two people. Two persons, places or thing. These two students love each other. Love cannot be between three people. Okay, that is only in Bollywood movies. Love can only be between two people. Are you getting this? So, sorry, uh, focus upon the rule. Each other you are going to use when there are two people, things or situations only. One another when it is more than two persons, places or things. For example, those four friends always agree with one another. So, if it is more than two, you are going to use one another. So, you should say like this, when, when it is exactly two, then you will be using each other. When it is more than two, this is how engineers read English. One another. Is it clear everybody? When we are going to use anybody, everyone and everybody. It must follow the masculine or the feminine gender accordingly. Every one of the boys got his admit card. If it is girls, then you will use, use her. If it is girls, then you will use her. But you remember, when it is everyone, you are using singular verb. Is it clear everybody? Then you are using singular verb. Rule number six. Uh, okay, now you are getting adjectives. So, till now we have completed nouns and pronouns. Now we will talk about adjectives. How we have defined adjectives? Adjective is a word which precedes a noun or pronoun and increase or decrease or modify its intensity. For example, if you simply say Ramesh is a player, this is also correct. You are saying Ramesh is a player, this is also correct. But when you are saying Ramesh is a good player, so you are saying Ramesh is not an ordinary player. Ramesh is a good player. You are increasing the intensity, modifying the intensity. Of whom? This noun, player. Ramesh is intelligent. So whose intensity you are increasing? Ramesh. So, intelligent is adjective, good is adjective. Are you getting this everybody? Tell me yes or no in the comment section. Now, let us see some basic idea about it. Adjectives can be in three degrees. Positive degree, normal case, comparative degree and superlative degree. When it is comparative degree, it is always between two people. When it is positive degree, it is general, general sense. 
when it is super superlative when you are comparing somebody or someone with the whole group for example you are saying positive degree no other player in the team is as good as prakash this is general sense good you are using in the positive degree good is an adjective you are using in general sense positive degree so when you say no other player in the team is as good as prakash so you are passing a simple statement that prakash is a good player now you are increasing the intensity you are comparing comparative degree prakash is better than any other player in the team it means you are challenging that bring one by one from your team and prakash is going to win always increasing the intensity this is a general statement that prakash is a good player now you are increasing the intensity he is saying he is better in the end you have superlative degree you are saying prakash is the best player in the team now no question no game no comparison prakash is one and the whole team is there because prakash is the best player in the team so this is about increasing the intensity modifying the intensity now this is extremely important i am going to give 21 stars very frequently as in your examination again he is asking pdf i am standing live in front of you and you are busy with the pdf what is this this is wrong for example as dot 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 as so dot 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 as it is used in the positive degree just now we have seen the example just now we have seen the example as good as so good as are you getting this as good as so good as it is used in the positive degree adjective plus er and then it is used in the comparative degree for example prakash is better than so you are using then also here make a frame in this in your mind superlative form you are using adjective in the superlative form and you are using article da before it so when you are saying prakash is the best player so always remember you have to place you have to place da here good better best but before best you have to place da now see the rule number 1 for adjectives when selection of two persons or things the same kind of the same kind then the better of now this is very very important and it is very frequently asked just you should have a frame in your mind when you are comparing uh, when you are selecting the two persons or things of the same kind for example she is the better of the two sisters so both are sisters but you are selecting any one of them so you are saying it he she is the better of the two sisters so it is a frame you have to remember this whenever selection is being done between the same kind of persons or things as well as is going to be used in this positive degree only okay swapnil so, rule number 2 most of the adjectives form their comparative degree by adding r or er and most of the adjectives form their superlative degree by adding st or est you must be knowing this everybody knows this for example great greater greatest er est brave braver bravest er est rule number 3 some adjectives having more than two syllables syllables means sound syllables means sounds then you are not using this r e r no you don't understand it like this i am i am saying when superlative degree is used then always you are going to use da are you getting this it is not that da cannot be used with any anything else but when it is superlative then always it is used okay you are taking the rule in a different way so there are some adjectives when you pronounce them there are more than two sounds more than two syllables more than two sounds so you are not using r or er st or est you are using you are using more and most 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल ब्यूटीफुल मोर ब्यूटीफुल मोर मोस्ट ब्यूटीफुल ना यू स्पीक विद मी ब्यूटीफुल ब्यूटीफुल सो यू आर गेटिंग मोर देन टू सिलेबस इंटरेस्टिंग मोर देन टू साउंड यू आर गेटिंग इंटरेस्टिंग देन यू आर यू आर सेंग मोर इंटरेस्टिंग मोस्ट इंटरेस्टिंग when two qualities are compared in the same person or thing comparative degree is formed by using more instead of r or er very difficult to remember in the examination examination that is why i am giving you the exam example rekha is more wise you cannot say wiser you cannot say wiser so how you are going to remember this how you are going to make a frame in your mind after the session just call your friend in the night because the session is going to be late in the night and just tell him or her that he or she is more wise not the wiser can you do this always you will remember more wise not wiser any other when you say gold is more precious than any metal this is wrong because you are doing a comparison so when you do the comparison you should always do comparison in two things when you say any metal it means you are talking about the whole category of metals and you are comparing with the gold then it is going to be in the superlative form you can say gold is the most you can say gold is the most precious if you say any metal but if you are using it in the comparative form then you have to use any other gold is more precious than any other metal i hope you understand it rule number 6 some words cannot be used in comparative and superlative forms for example interior exterior ulterior major minor interior means inside of something exterior means outside of something external to something ulterior means hidden ulterior it means hidden for example we say ulterior motive so you might be saying lot of respectful things live in the class but after the class or maybe inside your mind you might be having ulterior motives that you are abusing me or you are thinking let ashtosh sir come outside delhi then we will see him how he dare to teach verbal ability okay i am joking anyways so these words you have to remember there is no logic no rule to it just to get a frame interior exterior ulterior major minor and it is very logical can you say more major can you say most major can you say more minor can you say most minor no can you say more interior what is more interior either it is interior or it is exterior you cannot say more interior most interior so if you are saying this is more interior than that this is wrong you should say this is interior to that rule number 7 some comparative adjectives are followed by to and not by then for example superior junior senior inferior inferior means somebody having uh, less priority prior prior means before anterior anterior means preceding coming before something posterior means anterior means before something posterior means after something so you should use to not than for example you cannot say superior than you should say superior to you cannot say senior to you sorry you cannot say senior than you should say senior to junior to inferior to prior to anterior to posterior to prefer to are you getting that rule number 8 some adjectives not used with comparatives and superlative degrees for example empty again you can put the same logic listen prior means what prior is in terms of sequence you have 10 things this comes prior to this then you are talking about preferences but when you say anterior anterior you are giving the time scale 
something happens before something so it is anterior something is happening after something so it is posterior For example, empty, excellent, circular. Now you cannot say more circular, most circular. Circular is circular. Either it is circular or it is not circular. Empty, excellent, circular, extreme, chief, entire, complete, perfect, final, last, unique, universal, round, square, triangular, eternal. Eternal means uh, eternal is something which is. Uh, which does not have, which is ageless. Eternal means something which is not limited by time. Not limited by time. Okay. The very first year of your marriage, not your marriage, people's marriage, they used to say, it is an eternal love. Okay, so after 2-3 years that Chandramukhi becomes Jwalamukhi, okay, so beware of that. Rule number 9, some adjectives can be used only in the positive and superlative degree, it cannot be used in comparative degree. For example, top cannot be top more, it is top or top most, eastern or eastern most, southern or southern most. Preferable is not used with more, preferable is followed by two. Now, very important, can be asked in your examination. Seven stars. If you are saying this is more preferable than that, this is wrong. You should say preferable two. So, after prefer, you have to use preferable, you have to use two. Rule number 11, two adjectives which refer to the same noun or pronoun must be in the same degree of comparison. So, whenever you are doing the comparison, always you should do the comparison. So, hi Ankit sir, I could not see your comment, sorry for that. So, everybody just welcome the most, you can say motivating legendary faculty for electronics, mathematics, <coughs> Ankit Joshi sir, thank you so much sir, it is a privilege for me to have you in the session. Everybody just welcome sir on my behalf with red hearts, flowers, thank you so much sir. So, when you have two adjectives which refer to the same noun or pronoun, then you should be using the same degree. You cannot uh, use different degree. For example, for so, uh, someone you are using comparative and someone you are using superlative. You have to use the same degree. For example, Gandhi ji is the noblest and the wisest of all national leaders. Are you getting this? It cannot be noblest and wiser. If it is superlative, then this has to be superlative because it is for the same person. Same person. Some adjectives when preceded by the, they become nouns in plural, hence plural verb is used with them. This rule is again 11 stars. And I am not asking you to remember this, I am asking you to remember the example. For example, rich, poor, needy, aged, blind, dead, meek. Meek means very weak. Meek means very weak. Wicked means devil. Okay. Somebody very bad person. One more word I am going to tell you. Wick. You know what is a wick? The thread. The thread of the candle is called as wick. You like my art? Yes or no? So, this thread is called as wick. Okay. So, when you are preceding some adjective with the, for example, rich is an adjective, you are placing the before it. So, it becomes plural. So, you should say the rich usually hate the poor. You should not say hates. If you are writing hates, then it is wrong. So, this is you should remember in your mind. Is it clear everybody? See the next rule. 
फार्दर फर्दर वट टू यूज वेन इट इज फार्दर एफ ए आर देन इट इज रिलेटेड टू डिस्टेंस एंड इट इज अ सिग्निफिकेंट पोजिशन यू आर यूजिंग फार्दर वेन इट इज अ सिग्निफिकेंट डिस्टेंस नॉट जस्ट वन और टू किलोमीटर मे बी हंड्रेड ऑफ किलोमीटर ओके जस्ट टू गिव यू सम आइडिया फर्दर एफ यू आर यू आर यूजिंग वेन इट इज इन एडिशन टू एंड फर्दर इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड इफ यू कैन यूज इट प्रॉपरली नॉट अ सिंगल इंटरव्यू इन योर लाइफ यू विल फेल नॉट अ सिंगल इंटरव्यू वट इज द मोस्ट कॉमन क्वेश्चन आज इन वेरियस इंटरव्यूज टेल मी समथिंग अबाउट योर सेल्फ टेल अस समथिंग अबाउट योर सेल्फ एंड वॉट मोस्ट ऑफ यू डूइंग सर माई नेम इज आशुतोष आई बिलोंग टू दिस आई कंप्लीटेड दिस आई कंप्लीटेड दैट Now please understand, you are a grown up. You are not KG nursery a student. My father's name is this. My mother's name is this. I belong to this. The person who is sitting in front of you, he is the senior most person of that panel. He is asking you tell us something about yourself. So you have to tell about your personality, your strengths, your weaknesses, and never say all the strengths in your personality. If you are saying four strengths, at least say one or two weaknesses also, and always say that you are improving upon them, and give some examples also. After saying those three four lines, then you you should ask the interviewer, sir, should I go further? The moment you reach this point in your interview, then you are able to say this, sir, should I move further? Should I say further? It means fifty percent of the interview you have won. so it is a very beautiful word for your interviews further are you getting this anyways many a great many a good many whenever you are using these words always use the plural noun and plural verb a great many people died in the accident my brother has a good many friends now make a frame in your mind you should never say my brother has a good many friend when you are saying many you should say plural form is it clear everybody rule number 15 After many, you should use a, then singular noun, then singular verb. Many, a, scientist, singular noun. You are not saying scientist. The screen is not blurred. Okay, use a better internet pack. Okay. You want hundred rupees whole month, five lakh GB. That is not possible. Use a good quality internet. Okay, it is okay. So after many, you should use. This is the construct. You have to remember it. Many a scientist, not scientist, and then is not are. Are you getting that? So this is structure you have to remember. Is it clear? So rule number. Anyways, I am joking. Okay, don't take it seriously. I am just joking. Rule number sixteen: Where to use few? Where to use little? Where to use much? Where to use many? Few you are going to use with plural nouns. Okay, when more than two things, persons, objects are there, then you are going to use few. Little you are going to use with singular or non-countable nouns, something which you cannot count. For example, little happiness cannot count happiness. you cannot say few happy few happiness few happiness is wrong because few is something which is used for plural, plural nouns if you are not using the article da a and an then few and little have negative meaning if you are simply writing few then it has a negative meaning if you are writing a few then it has positive meaning for example 
you are saying there are few books on machine in the library. What is the meaning of this statement? It means you are going to the library. Suppose you are finding a book on a particular subject and you are not able to find it. So if you are not able to find it, you are getting frustrated and you are saying there are few books on machine in the library. It means I cannot find anyone. But if you find a book, then you are saying there are a few books, at least one book you have got, a few books book on machine in the library. For example, you are saying there are a few eggs in the basket. It means at least some. What is this syllogism? We are doing it a very high level. Okay. Listen, listen, listen. You cannot complete everything in one session, dear. So I will be focusing only and only on important, important things. Are you getting that? So please remember this. This is extremely important. 11 stars, I am going to give it very frequently as in your examination. Fewer and less. Fewer is used with countable nouns. When you can count it, you use few. If you can't count it, use little. Few is used with countable nouns and less before uncountable nouns. Many and much. Many is used for countable. Much is used with uncountable nouns. This page is very, very important. Just take a screenshot after the session also. And later on you can do it. I am talking about verbal ability, dear. Verbal ability, I am taking important, important ones. I am not saying that syllogism is not important. Okay, understand. Now understand where to use to, where to use very, where to use enough. Very means high degree but not impossibility. Suppose you are saying gate is very difficult examination. It means you are saying the difficulty level in the gate examination is high. But it is not that you cannot qualify. It is not that you cannot succeed in this examination. It is difficult, but you have to do hard work. When you are saying very, but when you use two, it suggests impossibility. Suppose I am saying gate is too difficult to qualify, it means it is almost impossible for somebody to qualify the gate examination. Example, you can take any example, you can make lot of sentences. The only thing you remember is that when it is few, fewer, it is related to countable. When it is less, it is uncountable. Okay, for example, less honest, you cannot count honesty, fewer clothes, he or she has fewer clothes than me. So when you can count it, No, 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 that usage is different. You understand it is a, it is a different set. What you are saying is different. When you say too much, too much means very high intensity you are making. You are saying talking much. You are saying talking too much. So too much means very high. Here also basically you are increasing the intensity. When I am saying gate is too difficult to qualify, so I am increasing the intensity. Are you getting that? Now, when you write enough, it suggests possibility and sufficient degree. Okay. So, enough means when it suggests possibility or sufficient degree. For example, you are, I am saying your preparation is enough. Your preparation is enough to get a good rank in the gate examination. So, you have sufficient possibility. Rule number 18. Hardly scarcely, rarely, seldom. Seldom means very less possibility. 
विदाउट एंड ओनली नाउ देर इज अ कंस्ट्रक्ट फॉर दीज वर्ड एंड यू हैव टू रिमेंबर इट अगेन इट इज गोइंग टू बी ट्वेंटी वन स्टार्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर योर एग्जामिनेशन स्कार्सली एंड हार्डली दे आर फॉलोड बाई वेन नॉट बाई देन प्लीज रिमेंबर इट यस रेयर मीन्स लेस पॉसिबिलिटी लेस फ्रीक्वेंसी स्कार्सली एंड हार्डली मेक अ शॉर्ट नोट राइट नाउ इट सेल्फ यू आर गोइंग टू यूज वेन नॉट देन नो सूनर यू आर गोइंग टू यूज देन राइट अ शॉर्ट नोट राइट नाउ हार्डली स्कार्सली You should use when, not then. After no sooner, you should write then. Now there is a construct. What is the construct? No sooner. After no sooner, if you are using had, remember it. You have to remember it. There is no other way. Make a. You cannot make a frame in your mind. Remember it. Important. After no sooner, if you are having had, then you will have subject. Then you will have past participle. so if it is had then you will use past participle if it is did then you will use present tense are you getting this for example the first example i am giving you no sooner had subject i past participle reached the station than the train left with no sooner you are using then it means i could not catch the train i missed the train Are, are you getting this? Now you are using did. No sooner did I reach. Why reach? Present tense. Then the train left. Are you getting this? So remember this. This construct you have to remember. Important. Rule number nineteen. Some verbs related to sensation are followed by adjectives and not by adverbs. For example, feel, look, seem, appear, smell, taste, a sound. you can follow them by adjectives not by adverbs for example you cannot say he feels badly this is wrong badly is adverb you should say bad he feels bad adjective the soup smells deliciously this is wrong you should say the soup smells delicious so whenever you go to the restaurant you say it to your fellow men and women the soup is smells delicious and if somebody is saying the soup is smells deliciously then you say ha 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 you don't know english are you getting that now let us talk about adverbs so after this adverbs we will be having verbs then preposition then i think something more and then we will be doing some questions so i am giving you a 10 minutes break okay how many people want the break how many people want the break what is the time now see you guys are in the age when anybody can fool you okay what is the need of break even if i am saying take the break you should be standing like this no sir no sir we want to read we want to read it is gate examination so now tell me how many of you want the break okay so no break i was thinking you should say yes sir we want break so you broke my heart anyways no issue listen 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 now talk about adverbs we have defined what is adverb so adverb is basically word which increase decrease or modifies the intensity of intensity of
intensity of verb adjective or adverb itself this is how we are defining adverbs listen 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 rule number 1 adverb must be placed as near as possible to the word it modifies which word it is modifying it may be a verb it may be an adjective it may be an adverb for example if you are saying she just wants to take one class this is wrong what is just just is an adverb which words intensity it is modifying class because you are saying na she wants to take just one class yes so just must be placed near this are you getting this or you can write in terms of this in terms of verb sorry sorry just change it Let's change it. My bad. Just is indicating about this. So just should be as near as possible to take. What is take? Take is a verb. So you are increasing or modifying the intensity. You are saying take just one class. Okay, that was not correct. This is correct. So it is very logical. whenever adverb is going to modify the intensity of any other word it has to be as close as possible rule number 2 when a verb consists of an auxiliary and main verb auxiliary means time stamping is are was were main verb action part or expression adverb is placed in between them this is important rule for example you are saying I have told him often not to come late. I have told him often not to come late. Now often is the adverb, so you have to use it between the auxiliary verb and the main verb. I have often told him not to come late. Is it clear, everybody? What is no no? You understand it? You follow me? Any problem? You can ask me. Okay. Rule number three: the word only should be placed before the word it modifies. Again, the same rule, same logic. I only solved two problems. This is wrong because what you are modifying by using this only two problems. So you are saying only two problems. Is it clear? When used as adverb, some words have a different meaning. For example, when you say hard. it means more physical output okay it means suppose you are saying hard work so more physical exercise you have to do hardly when you say the meaning changes it becomes rarely barely scarcely now let us talk about verb verb we have defined it relates or it gives you the expression of the subject the hero of the sentence so when two subjects are joined by and the word is plural and this is very logical also my friend and his father are in japan okay you cannot say his father is in japan if you write is this is wrong and you are adding then the verb is going to be in plural rule number 2 when two singular nouns are joined by an and refer to the same person this is the similar rule we have already done it when two things representing same thing same person then the verb is in the singular the district magistrate and the collector is on leave why because the district magistrate is the collector an ias officer has two responsibility to collect the revenue so it is a collect he is a collector he or she is a collector district magistrate because he take care of the revenue matters so when it is the same person or thing you are using singular verb the secretary and the president now they are two different people so you cannot use singular here you are using have 
because secretary and president are different. When different, you use plural. When it is same, you use singular. Rule number three, if two different nouns express one idea, the verb should be in the singular form. Okay. For example, bread and milk is good for the breakfast. You are portraying the Somebody please send the telegram link. Okay, I am not that much technically sound. It is electrical by Ashutosh Saxena. Electrical by Ashutosh Saxena. Anyways. So what I was saying, now bread and milk, you are giving the same idea, idea is that it is good for breakfast, that is why you are using is. Rice and curry is my favorite dish, now you should not say rice and curry are my favorite dish, because the same idea you are portraying. Okay, you are saying no means no break, okay. See, I only decide when I am going to give you break. Okay, anyways, was joking. Rule number four, when two singular subjects are practically synonymous, the verb should be in the singular form. For example, his power and influence, same idea. So, you cannot say his power and influence are on the rise. You should say is on the rise. Make a frame in your mind. Peace and prosperity is the need of the day. This is very important. You must be using it in your day to day. So, please relate it. Is it clear everybody? If the professor and HOD indicates the same person, then you should be using is, otherwise are. Rule number five, if the two singular subjects are preceded by, again the same rule, you remember each and every, then the verb should be in the singular form, each and every singular form. Every boy and girl was, every man and every woman has. So, rule number six, none or no. None can take either singular or plural verb depending upon the noun which follows it. So, with none you can use singular also, plural also. For example, none of the counterfeit money has been found. Okay. None of the students have. So, whatever noun you are using accordingly, you are going to use the verb for none. But, when you talk about no, no can take singular and plural verb depending on the noun which follows it. So, it is the same thing why they are making a difference. For example, no example is relevant to this situation. No examples are. So, whatever is the noun accordingly you have to take the verb for no and none. No difference between them. Majority can be singular or plural. If it is alone, it is singular. If it is followed by a plural noun, it is usually plural. This is important. Okay. Ye bilkul pagla gaya mysterious. Chate kya bhaiya? Kuch kha kai maan hoge kya tum? You want something? That is why I always say, Kabhi bhi sasta nasha nahi karna chahiye. Nasha karna hai jeevan mein bade nashe karo. Think about something big. Anyways. For example, if you are using majority as it is, alone, then it is usually singular. For example, the majority believes. Now make a frame in your mind. The majority believes. You are not saying believe. Now, when you are using, it is followed by a plural noun. For majority of the students, then you are using were. Because were is going to satisfy this, students. So there is no password, okay. After the session, I will just upload it, PDF, on my personal Telegram channel. You can join it.
Rule number eight, when you are using a lot of, a great deal of, plenty of, most of, some of, and when referred to a number, then plural verb is used. This is also important. A lot of people were. When referred to an amount, when it refers to an amount, then it is singular. For example, a lot of work. So something, something which, no, no, just leave them alone, leave them alone. These kind of people will always be there. My best wishes with them. Don't fight with each other. Okay, you all are my lovely students. I want all of you to get success in whatever area you deserve and you want. If somebody wants to become a bad person, I don't want him to become a bad person. I want him to become the worst person. Okay? But if you want to become a good person, I will do everything to make you the best person. So, something which can be counted. So, if it is an amount, you can count it. So, you are using uh, singular verb. A lot of, sorry, I made it wrong. Something which you cannot count. It, he has written here amount, but it means that it cannot be counted. For example, lot of work. Now, work you cannot count. Work is less or more. You cannot count it. So, you are using singular. Now, something which you can count, lot of people. So, you can count now how many people. So, lot of people. So, we are using work. This is the logic here. Now, comes to preposition. Preposition, I told you, it gives the relation of the subject, okay, a relation of the subject. It gives you the position, the status. Now, there are some words, rule number one, there are some words where the prepositions require gerund. Now, what is gerund? Gerund is when you make a verb to act as a noun by putting ing, adding the ing in general. Okay, for example, refrain from hurting, prevent from working, tired of writing, fond of playing, fond means to love, pretext for delaying, pretext means excuse, succeed in doing, abstain, abstain means abstain means to avoid. There is one more word, abstemious. Abstemious means to avoid physical pleasure, any kind of physical pleasure. Okay. So, you are using this format. Please remember it. It's not suffering from. Suffering from is a different construct. Here we are talking in terms of the gerund, a verb which is used as a noun by adding ing. For example, hurting, working, writing, playing, delaying, doing. Okay. There are some more. For example, aid at doing, bent upon doing, adverse to playing, expert in inventing, desist from talking, capable of playing, insist on going. Now, these are the set pattern, you have to remember it, there is no other option. Refrain means to avoid. Refrain, where it is, refrain means to avoid. Rule number two, when you are going to use in and when you are going to use within. Now, in means an approximate time. For example, you are saying he will return in a month. It means it can be less than month also. It can be more than one month also. When you are saying within, 
it means within that time period if you are saying he will return within a month it means he is going to return before one month only it cannot be more than one month now you can understand this when you are dealing with the people for example somebody is taking borrowing money from you okay somebody has taken 5 crore rupees borrowed 5 crore rupees your friend has borrowed because you have lot of money and he is saying that he will return that 5 crore money in a month so you understand he is not going to return it in a month you ask him to write within a month then you will ensure that he returns it in one month is it clear where to use in or into now in means suppose this is the garden okay this is the garden yes playing with the words listen suppose this is the garden now you are inside the garden okay you are inside the garden obviously alone okay because still you have to get a job then only you can be two times anyways when you are inside something within this boundary then you are going to use in it's not always rest it may be motion also for example she is walking in the garden so when she is inside the perimeter the physical boundary of the garden then it is in but when you are making a transition you are crossing the boundary from outside to inside then you are using into for example he walked into the garden so when you are going from here to here then into they broke into my house yesterday are you getting this where to use in and where to use into on is used when he is speaking of things in the rest he sat on a big stone talking about rest before the names of the days and dates for example on friday on the 2nd of the august 2nd of august to denote support and concern he wrote books on philosophy upon is used in speaking of things in motion for example the tigress it should be tigress is sprang means jumped upon the goat okay beside means by the side of and when you add s besides it means in addition to okay for example i say my house is beside the temple by the side of temple but besides means i want to add some more information okay between will be used when there are two people or things among when it is more than two things now let us talk about the conditionals okay now only conditionals are remaining and after this after this we will be doing the problem so let me give you a break okay so it is going to be a 10 minute break then we will do the if conditionals and then we will do the problems just a 10 minutes break okay not more than that so what is the time right now it is 11:02 so around 11:10 we are going to meet again and we are going to complete it is it clear everybody okay thank you
So welcome back friends. Just quickly confirm uh, the audio and visual quality. I was not taking the dinner actually. Uh, uh, from two days I was uh, having fever and cough. So that is why I have to take a pause. That is the reason. Everything is fine? Okay. So now we will be talking about the Conditionals. Conditionals are uh, structures which are very frequently asked in various examinations, especially for gate examination also. Okay. For example, if you talk about if. Now, clause is nothing but a part of the sentence. A sentence is going to have Oh my God, one of the legendary faculty for electrical engineering, Ashu Jangra sir is with us. Thank you so much sir for coming to the session. It's a privilege. So everybody just give a quick, give a quick warm welcome to Ashu sir. He is also one of my favorite faculty for electrical engineering. Great faculty, legendary faculty. So now uh, let us talk about the if, if conditional. If you have a structure like if clause and there is a main clause, clause is what? A part of the sentence, not a complete sentence, part of a sentence. Now you have to follow these structures. After if, if you are having a present tense, then the main clause has to be in future. I will give you examples also. If the first clause is in past, then in the main clause you will be using would plus verb, would plus verb. If you are having if plus past perfect, then you will be using would plus have plus past participle. Is it clear? For example, rule number one, after if, if you are having present tense, then you are having the main clause in future. So, if he comes, present tense, to the library, then I will give him these books. Now, this is very frequently, this is very frequently done, wrongly done by students. This is correct one. What people are doing, they are writing, I, give him. Or they are saying, they are saying for this sentence I am writing if he will come to the library I will give him these books this is wrong this is wrong because you cannot talk about future in future. Are you getting the logic? What is the, what is, what is the mistake you are doing in this? You are talking about future in future. You can talk about future in present. Hello. Are you getting this? You can talk about future. If he comes to the library, I will give him these books. You cannot talk about future in future. You can talk about future in present. So, get this logic, very important. Rule number two, if it is a past tense, then in the main clause, you are using would plus verb. If she came, past tense, I would and verb, I would give, give her your message. Rule number three, if it is a past perfect, past perfect means had come. If he had come to my house, now, the structure is would have past participle. So, it is would have past participle, would have given. Is it clear everybody? You have to remember this. That is a different construct 
when you say had she come to my house that is a different construct after if if you are having a desire which is hypothetical then after if you are using were irrespective of the pronoun what you are using irrespective of the previous rule for example you are saying if i were a bird i would fly to australia now this is a hypothetical hypothetical situation because you can never be a bird but you are saying if i were a bird i would fly to australia so whenever there is a desire hypothetical condition after if you are using were irrespective of whatever rule is going to be there previously Is it clear everybody? Take the next example. If I will win the contest, I will buy a new house. This is wrong because you cannot talk about future in future. You can talk about future in present. So, if I win the contest, Yes, if I win the contest, I will buy a new house. In present, you can talk about future. Second rule. If I would have been there, I would make a speech. Okay. So, now you are using would here and you are using verb here. So, it is a past tense. It is a past tense. Second, the third rule. If I had been there, after would you will be using have and past participle made. Now, out of these two, anyone you can use. If you are using were, if I were there, I would verb. So, the second rule is going to apply. This is rule number two. This is rule number three. This is again rule number two. For example, if I would have a degree from that university, I would get a good job. Rule number two. Rule number three. If I had a degree from that university, I would get a good job. I think it should be have. This is wrong. I would have. See the construct. See the construct. This is wrong. Would have past participle. So, I would have past participle. I would have got a job. If I had a degree from that university, I would have got a job. Now, it is correct. Now, it is correct. So, just remember these three rules for if conditionals, they are very frequently asked and they are important. So, now let us start with the questions. Question number one, which of the following is correct with respect to the grammar and usage? Mount Everest is the highest peak in the world, superlative degree, before it you have to use article the, so it is. it can be correct. Highest peak in the world, this is wrong because you have to use the. One of highest is also wrong because before highest it should be the. So, one of the highest peak in the world, this can also be correct. But we know that Mount Everest is the highest. Then A is going to be the correct option. Is it clear everybody? See question number two. After India's Cricket World Cup victory in 1983, Shotriya, who was playing both tennis and cricket till then, decided to concentrate only on cricket and the rest is history. This is underlined. The question is asking what does the underlined phrase means in this context? History will rest in peace. This is wrong because rest in peace you know when it is used. Rest is recorded in the history book. This is correct. Sorry, this is wrong. This is wrong. Because he is saying it in a sarcastic way. Okay, when it says that rest is history means everybody knows it. 
it is already evident in public known to all so rest is well known this is the correct one rest is archaic archaic means very old so c is going to be the correct option she has a sharp tongue and it can occasionally turn hurtful yes hurtful can be correct left wrong methodical methodical means something is very traditional so this is also wrong vital also wrong vital means important so hurtful is correct okay she has a sharp tongue it can occasionally turn hurtful now when you talk about the reading comprehension reading comprehension means you have given a passage and you have to answer questions based on that passage or information the only rule you have to follow in this is you have to restrict yourself within the four boundaries of whatever given in the passage you cannot go beyond that even if the subject matter is i will i will get to that question wait even if the subject matter given in the context is familiar to you and you know something extra about it but don't add information from your side whatever is given in the passage only on the basis of that you have to answer see the previous question she has a sharp tongue it can occasionally turn hurtful it means it can be a bad experience for somebody indian history was written by british historians extremely well documented and researched but not always impartial so in reading comprehension questions you should always highlight you should always highlight the uh, highlight the twisted or turn, twist or turns or extreme words for example because but when you are using then you have to highlight it but not always impartial it means sometimes it was partial also taking the side of british history had to serve its purpose everything was made subservient 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 means secondary to the glory of the union jack later day indian scholar presented a contrary picture contrary means opposite to that he is asking from the text above we can infer that indian history written by british historians option a was well documented and not researched now he is saying extremely well documented and researched so option a is incorrect was not well documented wrong was well documented and researched but was sometimes biased this is correct was not well documented wrong so option c is correct after the class is finished you go to my personal telegram channel on my use exam prep that is go to the telegram app write my name electrical by ashutosh saxena find my beautiful picture and just join it the boat arrived at suppose it is harbor it was missing so boat arrived at at is going to signify the position which is not exact okay which is not exact you don't exactly know where exactly at the harbor but you are saying at the harbor it means it is finally it has finally reached the strategy is that the company now you are using you have to satisfy this company as a subject so verb is, verb is going to be in the similar form so it cannot be use okay and it cannot be used because past you cannot talk about present you can talk about past in present but you cannot talk about present in past are you getting this so the strategies that the company uses to sell its products now the subject is this subject has to be satisfied is strategies now strategies is plural so you have to use include as a plural verb so a is the correct option include including is wrong including means something additional you are talking about then you use including 
so a is the correct one read this passage a coastal region with unparalleled beauty is home to many species of animals it is dotted with coral reefs and unspoiled unspoiled means undisturbed white sandy beaches it has remained inaccessible to tourists due to poor connectivity extreme things you have to highlight how company is singular so you have to use singular verb na baba yes strategies is plural so you have to use plural verb baba that is how anyways so please focus here a coastal region with unparalleled beauty is home to many species of animals it is dotted with coral reefs and unspoiled white sandy beaches it has remained inaccessible to tourists due to poor connectivity and lack of accommodation a company has spotted the opportunity and is planning to develop a luxury resort with helicopter service to the nearest major city airport environmentalists are upset that this would lead to the region becoming crowded and polluted like any other major beach resort which one of the following statement can be logically inferred from the information given in the above passage option a the culture and the tradition of the local people will be influenced by the tourists this is wrong many of you are going to see it as a correct option but it is nowhere mentioned in the passage it is only saying that it is going to become crowded and polluted he is not saying how it is going to affect the culture of the local definitely it is going to affect but it is not given in the question the region will become crowded and polluted due to tourism this is correct coral reefs are on the decline and could soon vanish now this is wrong why because he is saying the coastal region with unparalleled beauty is home to many species of animals it is dotted with coral reefs and unspoiled white sandy beaches it has remained inaccessible to tourists due to poor connectivity are you getting this but nowhere he is saying that coral reefs are are on decline and soon be vanished even though it looks correct to you but it is not given in the passage so you cannot assume things on your own Option D says helicopter connectivity would lead to the increase in the tourists coming to the region. Now this is correct, but it is directly given in the question. Whereas D have to infer. D you have to infer. This is gate questions only, dear. Okay. These are some sample questions. even though there is a vast scope for now scope can only be for improvement scope cannot be for rejection or uh, fame it can be scope for fame but it is not a correct phrase scope for interest is also wrong okay so even though there is a vast scope for improvement its tourism has remained a neglected area so a is going to be the correct option not this next question by giving him the last now here peas means vegetable you know that something like this okay in winters you are eating too much this piece means part of part of a whole and this piece means peace calm so by giving him the last piece of cake it means part of the whole so b is the correct option piece of the cake you will ensure lasting peace in our house today social science disciplines were in existence in an amorphous form something interesting until the colonial period when they were institutionalized in varying degree they were intended to further the colonial interest in the time of globalization and economic rise of post colonial countries like india 
कन्वेंशनल वेज ऑफ नॉलेज प्रोडक्शन हैव बिकम ऑब्सोलीट ऑब्सोलीट मीन्स आउट ऑफ डेट विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग कैन बी लॉजिकली इन्फर्ड फ्रॉम द अब स्टेटमेंट सोशल साइंस डिसिप्लिन हैव बिकम ऑब्सोलीट दिस इज रॉन्ग इट इज नो वेयर मैंशन इन द पैसेज ये नो ही इज सेंग सोशल साइंस डिसिप्लिन वर इन एग्जिस्टेंस इन एन एम आर फर्स फॉर्म बट ही इज सेंग द कन्वेंशनल वेज ऑफ नॉलेज प्रोडक्शन हैव बिकम एब्सोलीट ही इज नॉट सेंग सोशल साइंस सब्जेक्ट हैव बिकम ऑब्सोलीट सो दिस इज रॉन्ग Second, social science disciplines had a pre-colonial origin. This is correct. Why? Because the first statement says social science disciplines were in existence in an amorphous form until the colonial period, even before the colonial period. Okay, so this is pre-colonial origin is correct. Statement three: social science disciplines always promote colonialism. This is wrong. Nowhere mentioned in the passage. Social science must maintain disciplinary boundaries. This is also wrong. So only two is the correct option. So A. The overwhelming number of people infected with rabies in India have been flagged by the World Health Organization as a source of concern. It is estimated that inoculating, inoculating means vaccinating, seventy percent of pets and stray dogs, pets and stray dogs against rabies can lead to a significant reduction in the number of people infected with rabies. Which of the following can be logically inferred from the above statement? A, the number of people in India infected with rabies is high. So A option is correct because he is saying the overwhelming number of people infected with rabies in India has been flagged by World Health Organization. So this can be correct one. B, the number of people in other parts of the world who are infected with rabies is low. Okay, so you don't have any information to this because he is talking about India. He is not talking about other countries. So don't add information from your side. Option C, rabies can be eradicated in India by vaccination of seventy percent of stray dogs. This is wrong. What about the pets? Because their other pets are also responsible for rabies, not only dogs. Stray dogs are the main source of rabies worldwide. This is wrong. Stray dogs and pets are the main source of rabies worldwide. So A is the correct option. Is it correct? Choose the most appropriate word from the options given below to complete the following sentence. If the athlete had wanted to come first in the race, now remember after if had, so it should be should have practiced. So B is the correct option. Remember the if conditional. Next question here you have to order the sentences statement 1 and statement 6 is fixed this is the first one this is the last one in between 1 and 6 you have to order 2 3 4 5 let us check what is the correct option okay this is called sequencing the sentences on diwali the family rises early in the morning after this what can be the possible option suppose you go with a option On Diwali, the family rises early in the morning. Then five, father, mother, and children visit relatives and exchange gifts and sweets. This is wrong. Early in the morning, you are waking up. Morning, you cannot go to relatives. Otherwise, you will have no relatives next day. Okay, so never go to your relatives early morning. This cannot be true. So this is wrong. Option B. So first is five. After one, it is five. On Diwali, the family rises early in the morning. Father, mother, children visit relatives in exchange and sorry, something wrong. I have done. Wait, wait, wait. I missed. If you are going with A option, let me do it again. Then after one, it is two. So on Diwali, the family rises early in the morning. Then you have two: the whole family, including the young and the old ones, enjoying doing this. Now this is wrong. This cannot be true, because waking up early in the morning, nobody can enjoy. Yes or no? Similarly, if you go with V, five. After one, if you take five, father, mother, children visit relatives and exchange gifts and sweets. This is also wrong, because you don't go to your relatives early in the morning. Option C, three. On Diwali, the family rises early in the morning. Then follow three. 
children let off fireworks later in the night with their friends this can be correct then five father mother and children visit relatives and exchange gifts and sweets correct four at sunset lamps were lit and the family performs various rituals then two the whole family including the young ones and the old ones enjoy doing this so all this they are enjoying together and then Houses look so pretty with the lighted lamps all around. So, C is going to be the correct option. Is it clear everybody? Lamenting the gradual sideline. Lamenting means expressing sadness. Expressing sadness. Gradual sidelining of the arts in the school curricula. A group of prominent artists wrote to the chief minister last year asking him to allocate more funds to support art education in schools. However, whenever you have these type of words, highlight them. No such increase has been announced in this year's budget. The artists express their deep anguish. Anguish means frustration. Somebody assure you for something and give you uh, does not fulfill that promise. Okay. At their request not being approved, but many of them remain optimistic about funding in the future. Which of the following statements is or below logically valid and can be inferred from the above statements? Number one, the artist expected funding for the arts to increase this year. This is correct. Yes or no? Last year they wrote to the chief minister asking him to allocate more funds, and this year it was not done. So Artists expected funding of, for the arts to increase this year. Second, the chief minister was receptive. Now, this is wrong. Receptive means with open arms. If the chief minister was receptive, why he did not obey to the demands, follow the demands? Statement 3. Chief minister is a prominent artist. This is wrong. His schools are giving less importance to arts education nowadays. This is also correct. Because he is the saying in the first statement, lamenting the gradual sidelining of the arts in the school curricula, it means it is on decline. So, a statement 1 and 4, B is going to be the correct option. Are you getting that? So, this is all from my side friends, some important information about the gate and engineering services test series can get unlimited access to the full length mocks, subject wise test, the link is given in the description that you can follow. Some of the important features of this test series is 60 plus test covering gate and engineering services, it is curated by gate experts, detailed mock analysis, all India open mocks, virtual scientific calculator and 4000 plus practice questions. So, this is all from my side friends, subscribe to Baiju's exam prep. It's done from my side, friends. Okay, thank you so much. So, I tried my best to give you the best I can give in verbal ability part because you have lot of other subjects and you have to revise them, you have to master them. So, if you have any query, you can ask me. Then we are going to say goodbye and best wishes from my side. Thank you so much, everybody, for your time. It was a nice time talking to you. You are the great audience, great students. You all are going to have great futures. The only thing you remember is, we'll talk about power system also, don't worry. Yes, just after the session, just after the session, go to this telegram channel, electrical by Ashutosh. Saksena and I will drop the PDF. It's okay, it's okay. Thank you so much everybody. Take care. Thank you. So, all the best wishes friends and uh, give your best performance this year and get success with flying colors. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you everybody.